Yeah, it's a pretty good year for blooms, I guess, eh? Even with the tire piles and the garbage, it still looks nice having this abronia light up the entire desert. This is really nice. This is what I was looking for. Triteliopsis. Oh, what a beaut. And I think this is a somewhat disjunct population. It grows in Sonora and it grows further south on the peninsula, maybe a little bit further west, but uh, pretty locally rare right here. Themidaceae. Close relative of our uh, native California Brodea, Dicolostoma, and Tridalia. The sparrow cow is just coming up. But all the uh, Titeliopsis, their, uh, their basal leaves are gone already. What is this lupin? Another cryptantha, of course. A lone cardon. Look, it's a nice pile of rubble somebody dumped. God, that abronia is just too much. Palafoxia. Nice camisonia. Onathera sespitosa. Why are you so perfect? How did you get so perfect? Ah! Jesus. Nothing like Mexican Themidaceae. Look at that, it's all just the bronia. That pink? It's all just the bronia and annual, and those seeds have just been sitting there waiting in the soil in all the brutal heat, waiting for the rain. I mean, it's not all a bronia, but it's mostly a bronia. A bronia is what we could smell from our dingy little hotel room over there. Of course, there's the Sea of Cortez, nice. It's a abronia and onathra, and the sphinx moth caterpillars love the abronia. When you get a big migration of them, like I've seen on Highway 62 in the Mojave, they'll denude all that stuff. I mean, thousands of these caterpillars will denude that abronia, that Nictaginaceae, four o'clock family. Here's what it looks like up close. They'll denude that in a matter of days. And of course, the sphinx moths are important because they pollinate the Onathra, the evening primrose right there, and they pollinate the Datura. And they're pretty cool. They kind of, uh, they got a pattern on their wings that kind of resembles a hummingbird, which of course, Seems to be uh, important in keeping them from being preyed upon, maybe? I don't know. Pelafoxia is going off. Some Sphoralsia, too. And then, of course, there's this bastard, which I think is just an invasive grass. The dogs don't like it, though. Anyway, so I pulled off the road at the first Tritiliopsis I was able to see. Alan was kindly preventing me from swerving into oncoming traffic or into the ditch. Uh, but I want to get uh, dark for a minute here. Here's Sahara Mustard. Uh, looks to be pretty recently arrived. Uh, there's not that many yet, but there soon will be. And it's producing a lot of seed. And look how, look how large it gets compared to everything else. I mean, that's easily three feet across. So, uh, yeah, when people say invasive species don't matter... You know, whether they're the animal rights nuts who want to protect feral cats or the, the horticulture. Some people in horticulture are real assholes about that. They say it doesn't matter. Uh, we'll see what this landscape looks like in 20 years when the Sahara mustard is uh, a lot more widespread and there's less abronia and less ferelsia and less onathera. Anyway, so here's Tritiliopsis palmeri. This is the first occurrence we've seen heading south from San Felipe. And again, this is the first... Uh, recording on INAT in this area for this plant. It's got a very strange and patchy distribution. Uh, no idea why. This is the only plant I've found on this side of what appears to be a small garbage dump that's heavily invaded by Brassica turnifortii, that uh, Saharan mustard. And then there's a couple more uh, right over there, but I, less than a dozen plants I've seen here, and I've walked around this whole area 
Uh, again, why is it so localized? Why is it why is it so relatively uncommon? Why are there not that many of it? And what is it? What's it need to thrive? And what disperses the seed? And this is a really really small one. There was a couple over there that were a lot taller. Maybe it's not getting enough moisture, but it seems like. I mean, it's a fucking desert themed dacia. It seems like it would have uh, had time to adapt. But uh, and I don't think this region's drying out too much. I don't know. I don't know what I'm, I'm talking on my ass. But anyway, it's a, a another plant mystery. Why is the range where it is? Why is it the? Uh, why is it so sparse? Oh yeah, that's nice. That's so nice. Look at that tissue just glistening in the sun. I got a couple questions for you. Though. I want to know why you're only in a couple populations, in scattered locales throughout the Baja Peninsula in mainland Sonora. Or did you go up into Arizona a little bit too? Could you answer me, please? I'm just a little confused. Why you got such a such a patchy distribution, huh? Why are you not more widespread? Is something bothering you? Is there a problem you're uh, you're having out here in this uh, desert south of San Felipe? Let me know. You're not answering me. It's kind of one-sided. Also, where'd your leaves go? Where's the little basil rosette? They're dried up already, huh? Oh, look at that. I wish smell could translate through the video. This might give me enough spiritual endurance to uh, go back to civilization for a week or two. Not much longer, but... uh. I don't know if that's Sierra La Assemblée in the background or what. A little farther south now. And again, no Tritheliopsis here, it just tapered off. It was just that one spot. Kind of odd. God, this is crazy. You think what it looks like so much of the year, it's just brown. It's like a switch gets turned on, you know? You turn the switch off, it's off for most of the, most of the year. And then, you know, a good dose of rain turns the switch on the light comes on and it just stays lit up but how does anything live here is what i wonder how does it what does it do it's got to everything's just got to go dormant you know what about the flies the pollinators all this stuff that pollinates this abronia the only things that stay alive it seems it's not an annual is the uh when you walk on all this abronia it's too beautiful is uh the mesquite and the creosote and then, of course, the loaf is serious, the cacti and the ocotillo and whatnot, but it's so crazy. So everything here is ephemeral. Everything is like a light that just gets switched off for about 10 or 11 months out of the year. And then gets switched back on with the littlest hint of water. Actually, it wasn't a littlest hint. It seems like they got dumped on because this is going off. So the only uh, the only perennials, the only things that that are obviously here throughout the year are the, the mesquite, the creosote, the lofa cereus, the ocotillo, the peridoli is uh, an annual, that aster right there, the brandigia, the cucurbit, abronia, cryptantha, onathera, camasonia, all annuals, and the seeds just lay in wait. Look at this Mirabilis, four o'clock family. Very, very glandular. And then the leaves, it just kind of lays prostrate on the ground and the leaves are enormous back there. Look at it. Almost the size of a fist. This little microhabitat, this little grove of uh, Bursera figuroides. And then there's Lyceum back there and there's Peridoli. But there's this really weird thing that we've seen. We're not sure what it could be. What could it be? Oh, there's a nice, that's a Fabaceae, I, I believe. I just looked at the flowers of it. Haven't seen that yet. There's this very odd. Oh yeah, that guy's nice too. No idea what this is, but it's flowering and the flowers look and smell pretty good. Very uh, ecstatic flowers. Very vivid, vivacious. Leaves are very succulent too. Have to uh, key this one out when we get back uh, to the truck. Mojavia, Peridoli, Plural Coronas, Arrow Leaf, this stuff smells so good.
Choreocarpus. Horse forty you and seal you. Yeah, there's so much, man. Come on, say these say real nice. Look at that Physalis too. Nice and shows you. What's this? A lyceum? It looks like a lyceum. Who knows? It's so green and it contrasts so perfectly with the rhyolite. God damn!